Before he starts their training, Jason takes the brigade to the market town of Minavino di Lecce. It's home to one of the most celebrated restaurants in the region. Wow, look at it, it's beautiful, huh? Yeah. Osterio Oregano is taking rustic cooking to new heights under head chef Alfredo De Luca. La cucina è espressione. Quello che magari non si riesce a dire con le parole lo si può dire anche con i piatti. Come se tu mangi dei miei piatti, capirai qualcosa di me. Alfredo is serving lunch. Wow. Starting with gin infused cuttlefish, with gazpacho, samphire, and caviar. I've never had cuttlefish before. That's my first cuttlefish. Nice, isn't it? Fresh. I've been working in the kitchen since I was 14, 15. I just like good, honest, traditional kind of food. If you were to call all the head chefs from the restaurants I've worked at, I think you'd get mixed reviews. For my quality of work, um, they would take me back. For my attitude, not so, not so much. It's followed by red prawn, dressed in seaweed, on a tomato gel base. La Gambiera Rosso, they're like a prize, a very expensive luxury ingredient. The prawns were like pretty I get, special. I, get what you mean. I work in a restaurant called the Boy and Oyster, which is in Margate, smack bang on the seafront, most amazing views. Neither my mum or my nan could really cook. So uh, I lived on chicken dippers and soggy broccoli for years and years and years. Next up, fettuccine in red wine with the cured meats, guanciale and pancetta and fried spring onions. That smells amazing. The ones I make normally, I cook them three minutes and they're ready. I grew up in Mauritius, amazing food in the sense that it's a lot of fusion because of the mixed culture. I'm a perfectionist. I tend to push myself too much, sometimes stressing myself out. It can be double-edged sword. <laughs> I've never had food like this, ever. This was one of the best meals I've had in my life. It's a big statement, it's great. Yeah. We've had a great lunch. You all enjoyed that food. You all agree you're in a great restaurant, right? Well, let me tell you something. This is the restaurant that in four days' time, you're going to be competing against that brigade, and that's the level we have to cook at. Are we cooking that menu? The chef chooses the menu, and we cook it. Four days is not very long, man, and that, that was a really high standard meal. I think everyone just got ego checked big time. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, this is not what... I wasn't no. expecting this, so... In just days, the brigade will return to cook for a packed restaurant of locals and have their food judged against Alfredo's. Everyone's got some decent strengths here. I feel like we're going to smash it. I hope so. Chefs are notoriously competitive at everything they do. Would I have somebody come in my kitchen and beat me at my own food? It's impossible. Hey, guys. Hey. Hi. Hey, Alfredo. Jason. Nice to meet you. Our boss is the most competitive person I know. So these are the boys? Yeah, these are the boys. A part of the boys. It was delicious. Jason's going to want to win. But it, it's going to be up to the brigade. Thank you. Right? It's a great meal, right? My brigade are very nervous. But me, I'm very competitive. How long do you work together? Roberto, two years. Alessandro is uh, now six months. Giuseppe, two years. Two years. So your brigade is already a good machine. Oh, fair, yeah. Right? My brigade, I have four days <laughs> to train. Good luck. <laughs> Boys, what chance for me to win? No <laughs> You don't think? No? I have four Michelin stars. Four. You think no chance? Are you sure? <laughs> Chef? Yeah. Thank you so much. Are you much. sure? Huh? Are you sure? I'm always up for a challenge. <laughs> sono fiducioso nella mia squadra. So che sono forti. 
e non penso che si faranno mettere i piedi addosso dagli inglesi. They're a well gelled brigade. They're like the real deal. And we've got four days. The food at Osteria Oregano is based on a tradition known as Cucina Povera, literally kitchen of the poor. It uses foraged ingredients and waste products to create intensely flavored dishes which will be the focus of Jason's training. Their home for the next five days will be this converted farmhouse in an olive grove 10 miles from Lecce. Come on guys. You got the sweetest, tiniest suitcase. Thank you. <laughs> Here, they will eat, sleep, and work together preparing for battle against Alfredo and his team. First and foremost, all your kit for the kitchen, if you just put it in front of you. You can tell a lot, right, by a chef, the way he looks after his knife. It's the extension of your hand, right? It, it, it's something you have to use for every single job in a kitchen. Show me. That's my go-to main knife. Yep. Great. Basics, nice, really. clean wrap. Is it new? I've actually bought it for this because what I've got at home is a giant pink toolbox. What's wrong with that? Didn't, didn't know how you'd take it if I bought that oh, with me, so I thought right. I'd go a bit more professional with yeah, it. Yeah, nice little team, Matt. Great. Thank you. Sure? Steve? Yeah. What's the measuring uh, tape for? It looks like part builder's, part I, chef's kit. I, use, I actually use this all the time. Yeah. Um, measuring pastries, just making sure everything's perfect, really. So we've got a nice, neat kit. That's what I like. Army training? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Being trained as a military chef, you literally are set up for everything. I was doing some absolutely unreal things. I was out there setting rabbit traps and doing a lot of cookery outside. I fell in love with it straight away. And that's everything you bought, right? Everything I bought. Yeah. Great. Um, I don't have any knives. So what are you going to cook with? Um, I know it's not extremely professional with me, but... That's just what's happened. Uh -uh. But I'm here and I'm ready to work. I started my own catering company. There was this one time we did this supper club, which was with reggaetoni, which was really fun. So it was fresh pasta and reggae. So you need to find some knives. I do notice when I meet people for the first time that they immediately judge me, especially in the cooking world. They think that I've had it easy. OK, great. Yeah. Come on, guys. The Kitchen Brigade is a very simple form of chain of command. You have the head chef right at the very top, the sous chef, which is second in command, chef de parties, which is the person in charge of each section, so meat, fish, vegetables. Then they have a commie chef, which is their assistant, sits below them. And then below that, you have the kitchen porter or the KP, who does all the cleaning, the mopping up, the washing of the pans, and so forth. It's a very simple structure. Over the next few days, Jason must work out where each chef fits in that structure. Guys, we're going to start the next part of the day. He starts by getting them to cook dinner, what's known to chefs as family meal. We don't spend all day on family meal, but we give it the same amount of respect what we do our normal customers' food. Family meal is when the whole brigade sit down together, so maybe a KP would sat next to a receptionist or a barman will be sat next to a combi chef that brings a bond into the restaurant so starter mains they're given a range of local ingredients like those used by alfredo at lunch we just use some of this as the base do like a nice tomato fresh onions tomatoes we've got some chili as well steve -o. yeah We've got some clams. What do you reckon? I reckon maybe maybe a sexy little clam and tomato stew. And though you're in there. Yeah. Chicory. In the kitchen, I get to see their characters. I get to see how much they care about their team members, if they can gel well as a team, who the natural leaders are. How are you doing over there, Rianne? Yeah, man, it's going good. It's going good. Just need to get this garlic in now. 
Do you guys want to get cleaned away? And then hopefully we're going to have five minutes to taste it all and see what we all think, and then we'll get going, yeah? Good, good call, Rian. Please need drying. It tastes banging. We're good. Yeah, happy? Yeah. Starter will be a clam stew. You all right? And then it's on to the main course. There's octopus. 45 minutes. We haven't minutes. got time to cook it. <laughs> so we're set on that. It's going to be a nice lighter dish. Chicken, prawn. Got a load of radicchio here. There's some confi onion, some nice roast butternut squash. We've got red cabbage yeah. and fennel. We yeah. can do like, like a Like paella, but without the rice. With like loads of stuff. I'm, I'm thinking we just do a really nice, simple roast chicken salad with like loads of the nice roast veg for the okay. side. Can we, give him, can, we uh, give this, yeah. can we get some olive oil and some like? Yeah. like um, I feel like she did just say like ten times. Okay, we're being ignored. Yeah. The girls are completely being ignored right now. Okay. Guys, completely ignoring the girls talking. The chicken going in. Oh, it's in. Somebody look at getting the stuff ready to plate up. Yeah, it's going to be cooked. Great. Us women, we exist. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, no, that's OK, that's OK. Look forward to this. Our first family meal. So the guys on the main course. Chicken served with a porcini and olive oil jus. Jus or gravy. <laughs> first time you worked as a team, how was team dynamics? In all honesty, I feel like Daisy and I were slightly dominated at times, yeah. but... It's quite hard to get your opinion out. Yeah. So you felt like you could have had a, a bigger voice, right? Yeah. In the kitchen. Yeah. It was quite hard because naturally for me, I'm, I'm quite vocal. It's like very assertive. I'm looking for natural leaders, but natural leader is not the guy who completely outvoices everybody because that's not a natural leader. That's, that verges on being a bully, right? When you get those big, strong, domineering guys who come in and they're very loud and they're, they have a, quite an aggressive nature, just very naturally, it's my job to make sure that when that happens, I have to stop it and make sure that they're not the ones only being heard. I want you to clean up, tidy up, leave the kitchen tip-top shape, make sure everything's put away nicely. All right, guys? Yes, yes, yes. Sure. Thank you, guys. Thanks for dinner. While the brigade cleans up, Jason, Dale and Andy discuss what they've seen so far. Let's start with Rianne. She's got potential. We know she's got some basic leadership skills. We know she's not scared. What did you observe about Steve? <laughs> I, d I do want to like him because he's got that passion, but he needs to be controlled. And they face their first decision. Who to appoint kitchen porters, the lowest rank in the brigade? Daisy's, you know, she turned up with no equipment, which was sort of a bit shocking for me. But maybe we'll give her a chance to see how she shines. <clears throat> what do you think about Shivam? Yeah, he just disappeared the whole thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very shy. If he wasn't here today, would I have noticed? I don't think so. No. I just don't see a long-term future for him unless he, he, he picks his game up. James, right? You know, Mr. Sergeant Major. You know, he's all over it. I don't want him like a dodging car, just literally banging into everybody, knocking him out of the way. I think he's too full of himself. He really needs pulling back. So do we pick the weakest two, which is easy, right? We've picked them. Or do we use that position to sort of bring someone down a peg or two? Evening. Evening, sir. Hi, guys. You all right? Throughout training, kitchen porters will wear black Chef's white. Frankie, so come up and get your white. Daisy, come up and get your white, Daisy. It's exciting. Thanks very much. Karim. Thank you, Chef. Stevie. Yeah. Bye. Thank you, Chef. Jess. Thank you. Rianne. So we get to our uh, kitchen porters, right? Kitchen porter is a role I started my first job in. When I went to London at the age of 16, Shivam, if you come up and get your kitchen porter jacket, and then James, come up and get your kitchen porter jacket. So we're going to get ourselves a good night's sleep, and I'm going to see you bright and early tomorrow morning. All right, guys? Yeah, sure. All right, guys, good night. I don't think it's a bad thing whatsoever. I think it's, it's what it is.
Jo, så er det bare, ja. Ja, super. Tak, kom. Se dig her. Oh, fuck. No one wants to be a kitchen porter, but are they willing to work their way back up? I'm confused, don't get me wrong, I'm confused. I was not expecting that. How would you feel? I don't, ah, think, I don't think it's a bad thing, buddy. Yeah. I don't think it... Yeah. Don't, don't take that bad, no. honestly. It's the first day. Don't take that bad, no. all right? Yeah. Don't take that hard. You've done well, yeah? Yeah. Hello? Hi, Mom. How are you getting on? Everyone's so passionate about food and everything. I've never worked with a team with that everyone's literally passionate oh, about good. it. Like yeah. So are you enjoying it? Yeah, I'm, well, missing home kind of a bit. That's, that's the only bit that's annoying. You know what? Chill up and you can and you will. Yeah? yeah. Okay, love you. Bye. Bye. Third one done. Good. Well done, boys. Can you pass me a plate so I can dish stuff up? Have a good breakfast, yeah, because we've got a busy, busy day ahead of us. Yeah. That is guaranteed. Come on, me, buddy. I'll have a little catch-up. While the brigade has breakfast, Jason takes Shivam to one side. Obviously, it was a bit of a tough tough day yesterday. I just feel that you're, you're, you're an amazing chef and I want to do right in front of you. No, but why I, do you I, think you're not? It's just the stress that takes over and my mind goes blank mm -hmm. and starts shaking. But it's not like how I normally am in, in the kitchen. I'm normally way more assertive, way more on top of everything. For me, it's so important that everybody gets a chance, mm -hmm. everybody. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've, uh, I've got two, two young chefs who started as, as, as kitchen porters. They're two of my most, most valuable chefs. They're great. They've pushed that extra mile. Yeah, they've it. done it. Yeah, you know, and that's what it's got to be today. Yeah. All right? Yes, chef. Here's a lovely breakfast. Now you're going to be slaves for the day. <laughs> In 24 hours, rival head chef Alfredo will reveal his menu for the final service. Until then, Jason must teach the brigade the basics of Poulian cooking. Hello. Good morning. Starting with a delivery from a local farmer. Allora, this is the wonderful cheese from Masseria Sant'Angelo. So this is the it's a sheep's sheep. goat. Goat, 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 goat cheese. Caccia ricotta cheese is a key ingredient in some traditional pasta dishes. Ma you know to make a uh, sanya? Uh, what sanya? Is it el tocco classico per... Uh... So that's classical to here? Si, 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 si. You know, I know a little bit about this pasta. It's very difficult to make because it's eggless. This is our first real test of cooking proper Italian food, right? The brigade not only has to learn how to make the eggless sanya pasta, they're cooking dinner with it for Rocco and his mum. My mother is a little sweet. My went to make pasta Attend you. <laughs> Thank you, Rocco. As you later. We'll see you later. Ciao. Ciao. Chip shake. Then we'll start the day. Yeah? In the Puglian tradition of cucina povera, eggs were considered a luxury, which led to pasta being made with just flour, water, and salt. Who's made pasta before? With egg. With egg. Not a water-based pasta. No, it's a lot less forgiving. So there's no, no room for error. There's not enough water. You won't be able to bind the pasta. It won't relax. You won't be able to roll it. So we need to get all that flour out of the bowl into the dough. And we're going to get it on the table. And we're going to start working it. Yeah. You want to fold, and you want to work that gluten all together. It's a really, really soft dough. And we're just going to do little strips. We're going to roll the pasta as tight as possible without misshaping it. And then we're going to literally swoop it around onto trays. 
to dry out. Next door, kitchen porters James and Shivam are left chopping tomatoes. Ciao. How are you? Very good. How are you? Very good. Oh, fine. Thank you. Oh, this is my mama. Um, mama, it's a pleasure to meet you. The team, they're very, very scared to cook for mama. They're in a bit of fear, in case they don't fish the things like they should be done. I was a little girl, I was a little girl. Angela, you are the, the guest of honor of the brigade. We've got to understand the local culture. We've got to understand the people. If we can't cook their basic food, what they eat day in, day out, all those things, what make that cuisine so special, if we can't do that, how can we go into one of their best restaurants? <laughs> Rocco and his mum, Angela, are being served two classic eggless pasta dishes. First, Sanya alla cima di rapa, which uses turnip tops, an ingredient thrown away in other regions. And Sanya alla pomodoro, a cold dish made with local olive oil, tomatoes, and caccia ricotta cheese. Three minutes till that's cooked, we need to get this done. I reckon the pasta went in a little bit too early. Okay. With pasta like this, it's very tricky. If you don't get it right, it can overcook in an instant. Need a bit more water. Yeah, lovely, thank you, James. Same. Lead the way and make sure I don't drop nothing. Good evening. Very good to see you. Oh, thank you. Ladies first. Grazie. Grazie. So this is the cold, and this is the hot. Bon appetito. I don't care if it's, a, if it's a Michelin inspector, a good food guard inspector, or, you know, it's my nan. It's just as important because I'm a cook. I cook people's food. That's what I do. Thank you. No, if I come over, see. Tutto bene? Or no? No good? Tutto bene. Tutto bene? Ah, mama. Questo è buono. Buonissimo. Tutto bene? Encouraged by Angela's response, Jason throws down a gauntlet for the KPs. Shivam Jane, you have 20 minutes to produce the cold pasta dish and the hot pasta dish from now. This is your chance to shine, your chance to get back into the brigade. Should we do cold? Yeah, hot. do cold. Cool, we're going with hot then. Nice one. 20 minutes, yeah, so we're going to have to be a bit quicker in here. In there. I'm going to strain it out with the spider, put a bit of the liquid in, sort of emulsify it with the oil. I think it's cooked enough. I, I like it like that. That's a great way to think. We have to stay because we don't want to eat. Shivam's cold pasta is eaten first. Then James is hot. Before Jason asks Angela to name her favorite dish overall. So the dish, what Rocco's mama and papa liked the most, was James. Thank you. Thank you very much. And in record time, right? Yes, sure. chef. Top man. By the end of the day, Jason has seen enough to take action. How's it going? Pretty good, sir. All good? Yes, chef. Sure. So obviously, James, I come to talk to you. Very sure. chef. You know, I saw last night when I uh, gave you that black jacket, you were gutted, right? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, big time. You know? And you fought for your place, and you did that, right? For and sure. I've come here to take that black jacket off you, right? And give you that. Appreciate that. Right? Thank you. Appreciate sure. <laughs> sure. that. Thank, Thank you very much. Sure. Right, well done. Appreciate sure. that. Uh, Thank you very much. Ah, oh, you're a top man. Thank you.
Hey, Sheriff. Hey, Sheriff. So how was today? Good, Sheriff. You were good in the pot wash today, which I was, like, super happy about. You know, I asked you to do a couple of jobs, you did it and stuff like that, but I'm just not, not sure if it's enough. I can see that your mind is somewhere else. I'm just basically super homesick. I, I didn't know you were showing that much, Sheriff. Yeah. And I just feel that you're not handling the pressure of the kitchen, you're homesick, and it's it's really showing. I can't let you stay, Shivam. You've got to go home. Good pies. You okay? Yeah. You're good? Yeah. Good. When you have to let somebody go in a brigade, it's tricky because, yes, I'm there to build a family, but I'm also there to build the strongest family I possibly can. And if there's a weakness in that family, I have to take it out for the sake of the brigade. You have to make changes to make it a better team. With the brigade already hard at work, Jason, Dale and Andy head off to meet Alfredo. Today, he's revealing the competition menu for the first time. Doing the menu tasting, you start to understand the philosophy behind the dishes as well as the flavour profiles and what he's trying to achieve. The very first taste you taste is the most important part of that dish. We have a real great chef. You stop and you go, whoa, what just happened? Alfredo has decided on a three course menu showcasing the best in Cucina Povera. His starter, orecchietti in a fresh tomato and cheese sauce. What do we think, boys? Tomato sauce is quite thick. Smells delicious. For a pasta dish, there's a lot of elements. Yeah. Not only does Jason have to identify what's in the dish... Is that basil? ...he has to work out if he can improve it to stand any chance of winning. I think the pasta's too thick. How about it is? How about we can improve on it, making it a bit thinner? Well, they could be wrong, but certainly the consistency L'orecchietta deve essere cotta al punto giusto, lo spessore deve essere giusto. Alfredo's main course. Oh, the dish was great. Is ballotine of stuffed guinea fowl with wild chicory, mashed potato, and a chicory sauce. It's completely different to what I thought it would be. Ad accompagnare tutto ciò, questa farona. Viene farcita, arrotolata, legata, quindi cotta come un arrosto. Noi la cuociamo prima sotto vuoto a bassa temperatura finché i succhi restino bene all'interno e dopo la andiamo a rosolare nel forno, forno alto, eh, per rendere crispi la pelle. Mm -hmm. Wow. Un bel vetro. Mm. Sicuramente è un gusto amaro, la gente non è tanto abituata a, a mangiare questo amaro. Cicoria, che è il piatto più utilizzato. Quindi questo gusto amaro, anche dato dal nostro olio, gusto della memoria anche ciò. Quindi a noi piace tanto usarlo. Do you think the locals just like it better like that? Mm? I just don't like it. But see if we can improve the flavor of that a little bit. Yeah. For dessert, pasta ciotto with vincotto ice cream and meringue. Il pasticciotto leccese è nel cuore di tutti i leccesi. Il pasticciotto è una frolla fatta con lo strutto, non con il burro. Have you got anything like this in our repertoire? Is there anything we've got similar to that as a fenonce and it's not the same, do you? It looks the same, but it's a completely different flavour, eh? Alfredo, delicious. Competition menu revealed. Alfredo has some news for Jason. There's a little problem. Sto aspettando che nasca mia figlia, la mia, la mia prima figlia, femmina. Mm, yeah. Girl. Congratulations. Eh, e quindi dovrebbe nascere in questi giorni. 
Nel caso in cui nascesse tra lunedì e martedì, io non ci potrò essere. Family, the, the baby and your wife is the most important brigade. So congratulations. Yeah. Jason now has 48 hours to train the brigade in how to cook Alfredo's menu. Brigade, where are you all? Can you come into the courtyard, please? Come on, I don't want to repeat myself. I'm not going to, like, wait for you to, like, faff around, yeah? Now it's for real, yeah? Yeah, if I call you, you come. Do you understand? We ate at the restaurant. He cooked us all three courses. We now know exactly what's in them, to a degree. We don't have the methods, but we've pretty much sort of sussed out between the three of us what goes into it. We want to change a couple of things to how we do things. What we're going to do tonight is we're going to start doing the preparation, and we're going to then teach you, and then we're going to practice, and we're going to practice, and we're going to practice. Understand? Okay, guy, white. Let's go. We'll do all the guinea fowl formality together. He starts with prepping the guinea fowl. Go in here. Don't go in here because you'll lose the skin, yeah? Yeah. Very carefully, and I mean very carefully, right? Start to run your fingers underneath the skin. Like so. Do not rip the skin. Rip the skin was screwed, yeah? With the brigade set to work, Jason, Dale and Andy have another job. Now we've got to look at, you know, do we change anything? Improving Alfredo's dishes. Starting with the guinea fowl and chicory soup. I've been a cook for 32 years, and that's the most bitter soup I've ever tasted. Yeah, it's local, isn't it? So either we try and please the locals, or do we try and elevate it to what we do. Mm. I think we've got to put some le lemon in it. Yeah. I really do. Next, they move on to the pasta starter. Tomato sauce, not concerned about that. Yeah. Cheese sauce, not concerned about that whatsoever. The big question, do they make it thinner, like the pasta they cooked for Rocco's mum? She's a pasta expert. Do we stay with that recipe, or do we go and try and make his recipe? I think we should make our recipe and make his recipe. Let's have a little tester. Test them both. And we'll see which one's better. Yeah, that's a good idea. The brigade is instructed to make two versions of the pasta. One thick, like Alfredo's. The other, thin. I've got spoons, guys. Right. That's the recipe from the restaurant. That's the recipe from Rocco's mum. Okay. Okay. The restaurant's thicker pasta convinces some. I think that one has more texture to it. For me, it's just the bite a little bit yeah. more. I just found yeah. it more interesting to eat. Others prefer the thinner. I personally prefer this pasta. Yeah. I did as well, chef. For me, it eats a lot better. It's lighter. At the end of the day, we need to please the locals, but we also need to please ourselves. We've got to believe in it. We've worked with this pasta as well. OK, hands up for that one. Let's go. Mass decision then, so we go with that one, yeah? Yes, chef. Bang in, Steve. Bang in. Yes, chef. <laughs> Thinner pasta selected. Jason continues developing the rest of Alfredo's dishes. If it takes a thousand times till we get that same flavour profile, then that's what it takes. He wants everything to be as perfect as we could possibly get to. Always try and push a bit further. When you work with someone like that every single day, you feed off that, and that's inspiring. Dale, do you want to just taste it, please? Jason never gives up. No. We'll have to make some more. Isn't it? Ten miles away in Minervino de Lecce. Alfredo's brigade is getting ready to start the competition. Cioè siamo duri, siamo siamo cappoccioni, siamo teste dure. Poi siamo pugliesi, quindi siamo l'orgoglio salentino che è dentro di noi che ci. They're cooking the three-course menu for a packed restaurant. 
But among the diners, three experts in Italian cuisine who've never eaten in Osteria Oregano. Tonight, they'll be judging Alfredo's food before doing the same for Jason's brigade. Wow! Gelato al vincotto. At the end of the meal, the judges assess what they've eaten. Bella presentazione. Un gusto gradevole. Novità di questo gelato. Sì. Allora, partiamo dalla... And leave a score out of 30 on the table. Back at the farmhouse, Jason awaits news of Alfredo's result. Alfredo? Hi, Jason. How are you? Buongiorno. You had the baby? No, not ancora. Big uh, sheep or tomorrow morning or in the afternoon. Okay, okay. good timing. <laughs> now, score, and it's 21 uh, in total. 21 in total? Alfredo's just called. Yeah. They've got their scores, and they got 21 out of 30. Out oh, of 30. That means they're tough judges. Exactly right. I know we can cook better than them, so... I don't want to tell the brigade, and I want them to go to bed on edge, do you? Because yeah. tomorrow I need them on it. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. So we don't tell them nothing. That's just between us three. Because yeah. 21, we can do it. Yeah. We can do that. With just 24 hours until his new brigade is cooking in Alfredo's restaurant, Jason has yet to decide which jobs he wants to give each of them. But he has a plan for bringing them back up to full strength. Hey, team, can I just get your attention, please, a little second? Livy, come in. By drafting in one of his reserves. Obviously, with Shivam going, we called on our first reserve for the journey. Olivia has uh, come all the way from Liverpool this morning to come and join us. It's going to add massive strength to our team, which I'm very excited about. I'm happy to be here. It's all here in, like, the flesh. It's a bit more, like, real, isn't it? Great. So, Olivia, go Thank and get changed, much. and we'll see you in a minute, yeah? Fabio. See you soon. Great. Olivia. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Not too bad, good. mate. Not too bad. Nice. Yes, chef. Once I finished college, I was offered the job as head chef at this Middle Eastern small plates restaurant. 21 and a head chef was, like, amazing. So, the guy who left... Yeah. Yeah, what was his name again? Uh, so his name Shivan. was Shivam. Yeah. In a kitchen, you know, definitely quite shelty and scary. But in order to be taken seriously in a kitchen as a female who was young, you have to have that kind of assertiveness. What do you think, Steve, to the new recruit coming in? She seemed pretty confident. Um, I think she's a look our chef. Now, I'm on about work-wise, Stephen. I need all my recruits on best behaviour. Yes, chef. Having watched his team prep all morning, Jason must decide if any of them is ready for the job of sous chef or second in command. I want to start talking about what role you think you want to play in this brigade. What position do you feel like you'll do best for me? I'd be happy with sous chef. You think you can handle sous chef? 100%. I'm confident. Yeah. Yes, chef. What would it be? To be completely honest with you, for the level of cooking we're doing, I would have to say commie chef. Sue? Yeah. Why sue? Because I think I'll do a good job. Just in the middle. So you feel coming down to be beneficial to you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I would feel more comfortable. I do think that I'm quite good at managing a team and guiding people. You have to get it right, because if you do not pick the right people for the right jobs, the whole thing falls apart. I'm just going to do really well. Give me the reasons, you know? You've got to give me the reasons, right? Give me so chef and I'll prove it to you. The younger guys, full of testosterone, and they're trying to take on the bigger role. It's my job to see through all that. 
whoever has got those leadership skills. I find them. But one member of the team isn't putting herself forward for any job. Hi, Jeff. Hey, Daze, what's up? Um, basically, I'm feeling overwhelmed, and I feel that maybe I, they will know much more than I know, and I'm not helpful. When you feel that anxiety, what, what is it? Does it feel that the walls are closing in? I mean... I just don't have the confidence. A brigade is also like a family, right? We're not just some macho machine watching. Anything that gets in its way, we chew up and spit it out. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. When there's when people need help, we, we help. I'd really like to be part of it, but I'd really like to start at the bottom. I'd like to pay my dues. I'd really, really like to wash the dishes, watch, learn, watch. All right. Thank you for listening. Take a little rest for an hour, and then we'll sort it out. Okay, thanks right. very much. All I right, really right. appreciate it. We'll see you in an hour, yeah? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Candidates for Sue, Stephen. He said to me, he feels he's ready and he feels that he would make my taste buds explode <laughs> with flavour. Yeah, he's too overconfident. Yeah. He can't be a sous chef. No, of course he's not going to be a sous I mean, chef. No saying. chance. Olivia. She's come in, she's rocked the boat. She's very, very confident. Yeah. Almost laser confident. Yeah, she moves well in the kitchen. I like her attitude. Mm. She's very calculated in how she works. I think she's going to be very valuable to us. James. He's keen. He really wants it. You can see it in his face. So where do we put him? This is the brigade we believe is going to give the best opportunity to win tomorrow. Jason starts by organising the brigade into sections. Two in the pot wash, three people on starter with Livia in charge. Yes, chef. Thank you. Three on mains, two on desserts. And then it's time for the top job. Tomorrow, James, you're going to be our sous chef. Sous chef, thank you. The whole team will be looking for you for leadership, not just your section. You're also responsible for helping the rest of the brigade to get ready. Quite happy with that result. Let's get us back in, mate. Going into the service of a brand new brigade, you can just hope that that limited time you've had together has counted for something, that they've paid attention, that they really do want it. Anybody nervous? It's nerve-wracking, but we have to do it. What you got to do is forget about the win and lose bit, right? Every single member of this brigade will add value. Doesn't matter if you're a KP, it doesn't matter if you're a sous chef. If every single person pulls their way and we see that, whatever the result, I'll be happy. Understood? Yes, yes, sir. Good, good. The pressure's on. It's my job to lead them best I can. It's the first time the Brigade has set foot in Alfredo's kitchen. Pasta in there, meat garnish in here, yeah? Yeah, we chef. Get the tray on, garnish on, up onto here, and then it goes over there, we plate from there and we send. We chef. Yeah. Perfect. Tonight, Osteria Oregano will be full of locals who'll start arriving shortly. The anticipation when you're all set for service and it's so quiet in the kitchen and all you can hear is the whirring of the fans. It's 
daunting. We're about to enter service. Hurry up, because the first check's here. Table, what, 100? 100. Guys, check on, yeah? Two covers. Two menu, yeah? Yes, yes chef. Yes, chef. Livia, five minutes, yeah? Yes, chef, no problem. Livia is running the starter section. OK, pass it down, let's go. Right, let's go. Minute and a half on the timer for the pass off. Yes, chef. Tomatoes in? Yes, chef. Tomatoes all on, ready? Yes, chef. She has five minutes to cook each order of orecchietti. But the thinner pasta makes it easier to overcook. Can I have the tomatoes and the basil, please, chefs? Please put them on a plate, along with your two portions of basil leaves. Have I got another piece of basil, please? This yeah. Three minutes, five minutes is gone. Pasta's ready, yeah. chefs? Pasta up, chefs? Yeah. Oh, nice, Livia, nice. Let's go. First plate's out of the kitchen, guys. Yes, yeah. yeah. Listen to me, main course, yeah? I want six guinea fowl in five minutes, yeah? yeah? As sous chef, James is in charge of the most difficult dish. The ballotine of stuffed guinea fowl with Jason's own version of the wild chicory soup. Let's go, James. Yes, chef, coming up to the pass now. Yeah. Walking, yeah? Packs. No matter whatever mistakes happen in the kitchen, the head chef makes sure they stay in the kitchen. Once we send the two guinea fowl, you give me two more pasta, yeah? Yes, yes sir. sir. The judges arrive. All they know is they're eating the same menu as the previous night. They know nothing about who's cooking the food. Tomatoes, check on free your, um, free pasta, yeah? As they order, checks are piling up in the kitchen. Lydia, we need to go pasta up. One minute. They got they got meat coming down now. After this five guinea fowl. Come on, hurry up. Let's go. Waffle, waffle, let's go, yeah? This is now the time for me to really know who's got it and who hasn't got it. Yeah. Make sure that that colour. I don't want. I don't want a dark. We don't understand that you can't get it right. Yes, chef. I got it. I know, well, you, well, you haven't got it because you keep giving me dark tomatoes. Can yes, you get, chef. You can just give me the right tomatoes. Yes, chef. Thank you. Siete pomodoro, basilico e cacio rico. Date il colore della pasta che non è quello di ieri. Ma che basilico, guarda. La scuola di basilico è perfetta. Have you seasoned that? Yeah, I've seasoned it. It's too salty. Chef, one minute on that. We need to refire greens. Right, what's up? One minute. Why are we refiring? Too salty, Chef. Why are they too salty, Frankie? Pardon me? Why are they too salty? Um, I tend to put quite a lot of salt in my food, though. Well, don't put a fucking lot of salt in your food, yeah? You're slowing the service down, yeah? It's not about what you like. It's that moment of when do you step in? Turn them over. The garlic in there, the chili, yeah? yeah? So Ow. You've almost got to go in at the very last minute when you can see it's going to fall off a cliff and bring it back, because that fills the team with confidence that you've always got their back. OK? Very nice, Chef. Mi servo subito la nostra salsa alle cipolle. Ieri era un po' più croccante la parte esterna, era... Trovo però che l'amarognolo della cicoria di ieri mi prendesse di più. Questa è... L'amarognolo in questa cicoria è stata smorzata. Ok. Obviously we tell them that that's face, so we want to face the sorrel towards the guest. Like that. Jenny, yeah? When you present it. Understand? Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. Let's get clean now. Hold on. 
pasticciotto, gelato al vincotto e meringa. Allora. Beh, è estremamente delicato anche il pasticciotto. But I preferred yesterday. Mm. A little bit more flavor. That's the last check. Hurry up with those pots and pans, guys, so we can get tidy, please. Last check served. The judges discuss the meal. Discuss the meal. What più morbido, forse un po' più gusto internazionale. Ok, punteggio finale ragazzi. Diamo un voto finale. All that's left is the score. Guys, <laughs> kitchen all clean? Yes, sir. Okay, so I've got the scores. I've had a good look. I'm going to go through Alfredo and his team. Yeah. So, they got 21 out of 30. Okay. Cooking their own food, so you can imagine how tough it was, right? Tough yeah. judges. So when I read it out, please, don't be hard on yourself, because we've got to pick ourselves up and go to the next place. Understand? Yes. Yeah? So we got 25 out of... <laughs> We got a brigade. Hey! 
As the two brigades come face to face after battle, someone's missing. Hi, Jason. Hey, Alfredo. Has the, has, has the baby come? No, uh, I think uh, in this night it's possible. Are you at the hospital? Yeah, now I must. Uh... Today we got 25. It's okay. Uh, it is a, um, a great honor yeah? Yeah. to challenge uh, with you. The way you talk about food, the way you talk about training people, and the way you talk about taste, 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 were like brothers. A brigade doesn't give a monkeys where you're from, what your background is, what nationality you are, what your education is. But what it does care is, is do you love food? And if you do, that brigade will absolutely give you everything you need. And that is, it's, it's like magic. Next time. Here's home where we're gonna be learning about Nordic food. The brigade hits Norway. Those stabilizers are coming off. But the challenge of Scandinavian cooking... Wow.